How do I find setups to scalp trade? It's a really good question, I think, right, that a lot of people have. This is one of my favorite topics, okay, and it's called the testing phase. Here's what I do, and I literally do this year-round, okay? On top of my normal trading, I am always testing new setups kind of on, a, on the side. These are setups that I observe in the market, usually casually. I know that this is going to surprise a lot of people. And I'll casually observe something happening, and I take an interest in the psychology of the movement around that particular setup idea that I have. For example, I might say, hey, I noticed that when these liquid blue chip stocks pull away, two standard deviations from volume weighted average price, and then bounce or reject off of that level two to three times in a row in a clean manner, it tends to do it again upon another test. Kind of that self-fulfilling prophecy plus the actual pulling or the actual act of pulling two standard deviations away from volume weighted average price, which is a very real life data indicator, which is why the volume weighted average price is, is probably the most popular indicator on the one minute chart. And you guys know I'm a huge fan of that self-fulfilling prophecy mentality. Okay, so I might look at that and say, okay, well, this makes sense in my brain. And since that move has not only happened multiple times now, and traders will see that as resistance, but that two standard deviation move away from volume weighted average price itself is going to have a lot of traders looking for that rubber band snap back in the direction of volume weighted average price. That, to me, in my head, it's like, okay, this makes a lot of sense, psychologically speaking, and from simply a technical perspective, and that will justify a testing phase for that setup. And I do this constantly with lots of setups. And now that self-fulfilling prophecy idea, right? Most of these scalp setups for me, it's based on that one big umbrella term. A lot of traders, therefore algorithms who are programmed to make money off the traders and also programmed by humans who also feel these emotions, we're all looking at the same thing. And that tends to create some truth around that thing. Quote, self-fulfilling prophecy. Okay. Now, testing scalp setups. During the testing phase, we test setups using extremely small size. This is so important, guys. I know it's not exciting, but this is the most crucial thing as far as the testing phase is concerned. I'm talking like literally one share or contract. The goal when we're in this phase, I know it's not to make money. That's not the goal when we're in the testing phase. The goal is to gather data the money comes from the data. We need to gather the data first. Okay, so each time the setup comes around, we trade it using a specific set of rules that we set, risking the same amount per share and keeping our reward to risk ratio the same. Once we get to the point where we've taken like 50 to 100 trades on that specific setup, we look at the data we logged since we logged every trade that we took. We say, okay, what was our win rate? The percentage of trades that we won, okay, versus lost. And then we say, okay, now, what was the reward to risk ratio that we ran on each trade? Was it 1.5 to 1 or 2 to 1, for example? Once we know what the win rate and the reward to risk ratio were, we can, we can actually get definitive edge like we can calculate whether or not the setup had edge positive expected value in the current market environment this is the good part this is the exciting part because we then get to see okay did this setup make the cut how do we calculate now if our trading setup has edge well we take our average reward to risk ratio let's say it's three hundred dollars potential reward and we risked $200. That is a 1.5 to 1 reward to risk ratio. So here's how we do this. Let's take our win rate. Okay, the other variable. Let's say our win rate in this case is 58%. Here's the calculation. We take the reward to risk ratio, multiply it by 100. There are multiple ways to do this, but this is, I have found is by far the easiest way to teach people how to run this calculation. We take the reward to risk ratio, which is 1.5. All right now, if it was, you know, three to two, that's still 1.5. So we take that reward to risk ratio, in this case, 1.5, we multiply it by 100. Okay, always 100. That gives us 150. We then add 100, always 100. That gives us 250. Then we multiply that 
by the decimal format of our win rate. So we multiply 250 by 0 0.58 because our win rate was 58%. That gives us 145. We then subtract 100, always 100. We subtract 100. That gives us 45. And then we divide by 100, always 100. We divide by 100. That gives us 0 0.45. So listen, the edge is 45% in this example. Guys, that is, that's huge. Okay, now obviously these are just made up numbers, but that's huge edge. That is tremendous for reference. Vegas's edge on blackjack is something like 0.5% with basic strategy. If someone's successfully counting cards, which to my understanding is becoming more and more difficult to do, they the card counter might have an edge of like 1%. This example has edge of 45%. That is tremendous. So the expected value, this is really interesting, guys, because now we can pull out Every time I press the button and take a trade, what's the expected value of that trade regardless of the outcome it's extended on across a horizon of, of a big sample size? So the expected value for every trade taken on this setup is $200, which is the risk, times 0 0.45. 90 bucks is the expected value. Every time you press a button, Following your plan, because you have the data, you know your edge is approximately 45%. Every time you press the button to risk $200, the expected value on that trade is 90 bucks. Okay, now so this is where I lose some people. They say, no, it's, it's either minus 200 or plus 300. We're averaging it out, right? Since this is a profitable strategy, the expected value is 90 bucks every time you take a trade. So after a thousand trades with this strategy, with these numbers... We expect that setup that you were testing to produce $90,000 if the stats above were maintained. Okay, now obviously you would test ideally with lower risk than $200, but now this is like, okay, we're playing this out now. We're actually maybe executing, maybe your risk is $200 a trade. Fine. After you take that trade a thousand times, if you're able to maintain those stats, you would expect that setup to produce plus $90,000. Okay, it's actually quite simple to, to understand and calculate your edge. And guys, this is massive. All right. Now, after the testing phase for each trading setup, when that phase is complete, if the setup has edge, throw it in your playbook, jot it down. It's, 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 it's made the cut. If the setup has negative expected value, meaning you expect on the average trade that the EV, the expected value, is minus, it's negative, throw it away. It, it will predictably lose you money the more you trade that. It's like, okay, this is like playing against the house in blackjack. I don't want to play that game. We only play the games that we predictably win at. That's being a scalper. You only want to play what you win at. All right, it's almost like cheating in a way, but it's not. The fact that you're going to keep some and throw out a lot, which is usually what ends up happening... It's ideal to test setups with very small dollar amounts because we don't know if it's going to work. It's also ideal to be testing more than one setup at a time. Since you're testing with such small dollar amounts, you can afford to test a lot of setups at a time since many of the setups that you test are not going to work. They're not going to have edge. The EV is going to be negative, but if you find that out with small size, it didn't hurt you. You got all this data that said, that's not how that works, that one doesn't work, with very minimal monetary expense. That's really powerful, because you can find what works and only scale up when you find what works. And it doesn't take all that long, guys. Now, your scalping playbook, okay? Your playbook, it's going to be the setups that you have tested in the past and know for a fact that those setups have statistical edge. The larger your playbook becomes, the more untouchable, the more bulletproof you become as a trader. And this is what is so powerful about this, guys. The longer that you test setups, which is why I, I think we should be doing this year-round and I, I test setups year-round, the more market conditions you're going to be testing in. That way, the more setups you end up adding to your playbook from a variety of market conditions, because you're testing through all of them, and that way, the more prepared you are for the, mic the market cycles of the future.
That's extraordinarily powerful.